again, when you decide to to end that partnership, yes, this can be extremely painful. Some people are still getting over divorces they've had 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Those are lingering and they should have been handled and we should have been taught how to handle those. And it, 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 it is about thinking, believe it or not. It's about how you're thinking about things and how you have to revamp, if you want to call it that way, re reconfigure your thoughts on your partnerships, your relationships, your marriages. Welcome to the Evolution of the Consciousness podcast. Love is spoken here with your host and guide, Michelle Carithers. Morning, 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 everybody. Evolution of the Consciousness. Love is spoken here. I'm Michelle Carithers. On this Saturday, April 6th, 2024, April the 6th. So I'm up. It's a nice and cool, sunny morning. I like it. I like it. I like it. And I slept. I rest well, you know, and I feel good like I know I should. I hope everybody's doing fantastic, magnificently and marvelous because I am. I am. So I thought I'd get on up and, you know, put some sounds in your ear, let you know that I care about people that resonate with me. And I also care about people who do not. I just care about people. You know, I walk the talk. I get the results. You know, if I say I'm going to do some things, I usually, I would say 95 to 98% of the time I get it done. You know, I put the, I know I have a lot of stuff on my plate to do with building my foundation, but I know that building a solid structurally sound foundation, whether it's literally, figuratively, and metaphorically, it can last for hundreds of years or maybe even millions of years, okay? We still have structures on this planet that has that have been around and that, that we're discovering for millions of years. So I'm gonna, I wanted to talk about something that, you know, that I think we all are familiar with, and that's when we have a breakup, you know, a breakup, whether it's in a friendship, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's in a marriage, a partnership, you know, that breakup stage of our lives, which is usually, which usually uncovers a lot of things if you're paying attention to it. It uncovers a lot. I know some people when you, you know, that I've had the experience with, you know, when I, when I've decided to move on or they decided to move on, it usually has lingering effects that stay around for 10, 20, 30 years. I mean, maybe 50 years. <laughs> it depends on how long. I mean, it depends on when you got together and, and this and that and the other. And thankfully, I did not have any children. And thankfully, I did not have any animals that would have made the difficult breakup even more difficult to do. I've dated people that had children and animals and such. And, you know, you do get attached. You, you know, you do uh, get attached. So you have to be so mindful of how you break up and and decide, you know, and decide to go your separate ways. You know, if you're paying attention to social media platform, you know, that's almost a daily occurrence. You know, we get all excited to see these people come together and these beautiful, these beautiful, I mean, the weddings, you know, I am, you know, and the suns, you know, the, the settings of these weddings and how beautiful it is and how we make these vows that we're going to do this and that and the other, that we'll be there for each other through thick and thin until death do us part. I would take that out. But anyway, I would put my own vows in that, you know, in my wedding, when I get what, when I get married, <laughs> I want to put my own words into that because it's not like our parents you know, marriages, marriages, uh, partnerships, and 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 however you are describing it these days, is not business as usual because the marriage part of it, you know, I mean the ceremony and the weddings and all that, that's the business side of it. Let's be clear and effective about it. That's a business arrangement, <laughs> you know, infused with coming together in a wedding, in my opinion, and a partnership as well. You have to sign all these documents. You have to do this and that and the other. You have to, you know, contact people, have people involved. It's it's a it's a business. Weddings are businesses, and we need to accept that. If you choose to, now you can do whatever you want. If you want to have a million dollar wedding that's over in six months, 
go ahead, you know, or $500,000 wedding as well that ends in 20 years. Go ahead. Just understand what those kind of lingering, because they're usually lingering financial attributes contributes to the business of marriage that lingers and lingers, you know, the financial, you got to pay them bills. You got to pay this, you got to pay that. And that can last for a while for some people. So uh, when my parents got married, they just, you know, they did that old fashioned way. They went to the courthouse, you know, my dad paid for this, paid for that. They signed it and they got up out of there. (laughs) And then they came back and, you know, enjoyed themselves, did whatever they, you know, accordingly to my mom, it, I don't know if they made much of a big deal about it because I think she was pregnant at the time. And the, the important thing for her is to have a house. Okay. So before my mom had her first child, she was in a house. Okay. So I think that was more. And, and, and keep in mind, they had been living in rooming houses prior to that. That's, that, that, was their, that was their arrangements, living in rooming houses, sharing property and stuff with other people. Okay. So. I, you know, and so, but like I said, before my mom gave birth to her first child with my dad, she was moving into a house. So I think that's, you know, so you got to just consider what you want and, and what makes sense to you, you know, when you are determining, you know, spending your time and you're hoping to spend the, you know, not, you know, you're hoping to spend the rest of your life with someone that you know that they will be there for you till the end. My dad was there with my for my mom until he, you know, he had to he he passed away first. But he was in his home, in his own bed when that happened, you know. So the that lingering, like I said, the lingering effects of breaking up with someone can be devastating, especially for anyone coming coming into your life. I mean, if if I break up with someone, I make sure those ties are completely uh, cut. Doesn't mean I don't say I don't say hello to these people. I don't, doesn't mean I ignore them. And I also told you in the beginning, before I decided to make this this uh, take this journey, this beautiful adventurous journey. <laughs> oh man! Before I, t- I decided to take this journey, you know, and and move on to something that I've always wanted to do. I wanted to travel. I wanted to see what was really going on with the environment. So I decided to drive. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you have an opportunity, I would drive across this country. And I think that might snap something into you as to whether you understand what's going on with the climate, what's going on with the desert, the trees, the disappearing mountains, you know, the disappearing trees, vegetation, the disappearing animals. Okay. And get that kind of up close and personal experience. We all need experiences, okay? And again, when you decide to to end that partnership, yes, this can be extremely painful. Some people are still getting over divorces they've had 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Those are lingering and they should have been handled and we should have been taught how to handle those. And it, and it, and it, and it is about thinking, believe it or not. It's about how you're thinking about things and how you have to revamp, if you want to call it that way, re reconfigure your thoughts on your partnerships, your relationships, your marriages, and make sure that you are healed from them before you move on to someone else. Listen to me carefully. A lot of people don't want to hear that. They'll say, you know, especially if you have children with someone and you have this volatile relationship and then you bring somebody else in it. I mean, how many times has that happened to people? You know, someone breaks up with someone, ends a marriage with someone. They quickly get into another relationship with someone else. They still have lingering issues with the past personality, I mean, the past partner. And then sometimes the the, the new person who's just coming on in, coming on the scene, not necessarily understanding what happened in that partnership or relationship or marriage as to why why it why it ended and that and one or the other may have something lingering you know maybe maybe it's still maybe it's still a a need to be with that person or need to do this or that and the other 
But then you have the new person in the middle of that. And sometimes the new person gets harmed, injured, or murdered, or killed. I know a lot of people get all upset. I mean, get a little worked about, about certain words. I just have to, you know, consider the wording. You know, they, a lot of people don't like to hear murder, but that's, you know, I mean, that is what usually happens. And that's the, that's the definition we've given that word. But, you know, we cannot say certain things, but yet we keep that behavior and action going as if, you know. So that's why I say words don't matter. You know, we say thou shall not kill. Okay. We say we're going to stay with someone through sickness and health until death do us part. Okay, how many people are doing that? How many people are doing that? So I, you know, when I get married, my my words, my sounds and tones are going to be meaningful to my future partner. Or, you know, you know, or that's just an example to understand that I'm going to be deliberate and I'm going to be focused on exactly what I want and what I need from a marriage or for a partnership. Okay. So I would, like I said, I wouldn't pay too much attention, but that's everyone's choice to what people portray to us about marriages and partnerships. And, you know, because what we see, especially on social media platform is contradictions all over the place, hypocrisy all over the place. And so, and so many people get so surprised, you know, that people are breaking up and, and divorcing. I mean, if you're considering, you know, the, the, gosh, the, the levels of our, of our interpersonal relationships, I mean, it's downright dangerous sometimes to even be in one, you know, because a lot of, a lot of the violence, you know, there's a lot of violence in some, certain relationships where one partner or both are, you know, are killed. You know, and this call they so called murder suicide is mostly domestic related. And then if you have kids and animals, and then you accumulate all this property and stuff, so it, it's it's, an, it's it's a business. Marriage is a business. Partnership is a business. And so I would structurally I would structurally set it up as such, and take your ego out of it. It's not to say that I don't love this person, but I want to protect both of us. You know, I want to protect both of us, and that's why it's so important, in my opinion to be able to stand on your own two feet, have bills in your name, and be able to take care of your partner if you need to, and vice versa. In other words, you need to be a whole person, both of you, whole people, meaning if something were to happen, it wouldn't be this, this long, drawn-out court proceedings, fighting over this, fighting over that. You have to, you know, determine those things up front, you know? So, yes, I uh, I pay attention to, you know, what's going on, you know, in my environment. As I said, my, my environment is peaceful for the most part. I created a peaceful environment, but I do understand that we are in close quarters with each other. And some, you know, some tempers can be flaring and did all this because that's what was happening last night. I think someone was moving in and they were getting frustrated because that's that's stressful too. <laughs> you know, to be moving in. And this person apparently had a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. And they were attempting to, it sounds like, I don't know what they were doing, but it sounds like they were possibly, because we don't have elevators here, it's only two stories, but it appears that they were attempting to bring that stuff upstairs and it was just slamming and banging and, you know, I heard children and I heard someone, I heard a female yelling, you know, that's, that's, uh, (laughs) that's, 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 people snap. And so people are snapping over the smallest things and then they uh, go off on you. You know, you have nothing to do with what what's going on in their life, but they'll go off on you. Instead of, instead of, you know, just being conscious of what's really going on. But it is, that's what stress does. Stress will send you immediately unconscious. And sometimes you have no idea what you're doing or what you're saying to people and how you sound to people in your tones and such. So. Like I said, I'm paying attention to everything that's going on in my environment, you know, and, you know, for the most part, you know, like in, this environment, as I said, has all walks of life here, all type of luxury vehicles, some vehicles that have no tires on them, <laughs> some with expensive tires on them, all nationalities, all colors, shapes and sizes. So, and I can see desperation in the eyes of some. I can see joy in the eyes of the children. The children are going to play 
whether it's in a uh, whether it's in a war zone or a peaceful environment, quote unquote. It's hard to find peaceful, you know, legitimately peaceful environments because then I told you about how all this artificial sounds of people revving their engines and, and you know, revving and just causing a whole lot of artificial noise that's disturbing the consciousness of the everyone, especially the young people. But at the same time, young people still can, you know, young toddlers and children, they still are, I hear them play, I hear them, you know, screamy, yelly, you know what kids do when they're playing and having a good time. They're kind of not really in touch with their environment and know how dangerous it, noise pollution can cause their consciousness, you know, because everything is about the evolution of the consciousness and protecting the psyche, protecting your consciousness from from lingering effects of of stuff. That's why you have to work out when you do decide to enter a relationship with someone or partnership with someone, do everything in your power to work it out and get Get all of the lingering effects of it out of your brain, out of your thoughts, so that you don't uh, have all that residue go on to the new person that comes in your life and make them a victim of something that they did not cause. You know, so important to do that. So on this Saturday morning, you know, everything looks good in my hood. I have no complaints, you know, except to just just to make it very clear and effective that we really need to decide to take care of our thoughts, monitor, monitor our thoughts, and make sure we know what we have and what we need and what we want, you know. And if you want to be with someone, be with that person, but be there for genuine, for genuine reasons. You know, if you want to get together with someone because they got a lot of income or you want to get together with someone because they got a nice ass, you know, and uh, and they look good and they look make you look good and you know, the financial part of it, in my opinion, causes the most damage in these these relationships, these marriages. You know, the financialness of materialism. You know, your property, your property versus my property. You know, your animals, your children. You know, your career. You know, all this. Fine. You know, and people are some people are looking to, to take everything that someone has and someone has earned. You know, it's painful. It's deadly also. Interpersonal relationships, no longer business as you, and no longer, I mean, they're no longer business as usual. They've all, you know, marriages to me are businesses. But then when they break up, you know, like companies break up, the same thing, partnerships, relationships, marriages, and verbal agreements are valid, you know, it can be used against you. So, so make sure you're whole. You've, you know, if you have a, if you still want to be with somebody else, it's going to it's going to show up in the marriage. I don't care who you marry, marry to or who you're in a partnership with. If you still have lingering effects for someone else, and you you know, it's going to show up. And, the, and that new partner there is going to be, you know, you know, like I said, sometimes jaded and, you know, injured and heartbroken and, you know, when it really wasn't their fault. So we all have to be mindful of how we come together and what we do when we decide to come together and make sure we are whole people, that we are healed. You know, there's no no longer, you know, you could talk about your your exes, sure. But, you know, some of us, like, I could pick up when someone still has lingering effects for someone. I can. And everyone else can, too. If we are, if we just trust our instincts and trust, you know, how we are sensing and receiving people, you know, you can pick that up. But like I said, Financially, it's what ruins a lot of relationships more than cheating, in my opinion. Okay, financial and the stress of that and then trying to separate your properties, you know, and it turns into, you know, what kids do in the park when they, you, when you, when, you know, when they don't want to share their property and, oh, you know, and that's how it, it but now it's more vol- volatile and deadly, you know, especially for kids that may come into these uh, partnerships, relationships, marriages. It, like I said, it's beautiful in the beginning. I think I've seen so many beautiful, but how about having beautiful divorces? Hmm? Has anyone considered that? Let's have a beautiful divorce here where we are in agreement that this relationship is over. And then, you know, see if we can separate our things, our materialism, our mo- you know, and money, you know, it becomes volatile and dangerous. So protect yourself. 
Protect your thoughts, protect your psyche, protect your consciousness from the ravages and the degeneration and the the damaging effects we've caused to our interpersonal relationships. You know, it's about universal love. It's about love. Love does not end ever. But hate is there. Hate can end and be neutralized. But it's still there. But it's neutralized. In other words, that energy is there, but it's not effective. Love can surpass all of that. Love knows. Okay, love knows. So I'm going to go ahead and start my day again, like I usually do, get into my routines and decide how I'm going to handle my weekend. I welcome my weekends and every day of the week with joy and enthusiasm and with it, you know, because I see it as opportunities. I, I, you know, I want my opportunities to be used properly. You know, when you lose opportunities, you lose opportunities. A lot of people keep saying this stuff and they don't understand that certain things only come around once. Okay, certain things only come around once. And for you, for people to keep telling people there's, you, it's never too late. I wish we would consider that and think about that clearly and effectively. What are you saying there? It's not too late for what? You know, it's not too late for what? Okay, so just be honest. Do not seek to have everyone like you or, you know, to win arguments and win opinions. Just Think clearly and effectively about what are your intentions? What are you attempting to relay to people? Are you being honest? Are you being genuine? Have you had these experiences? Okay, can you walk the talk? Do you have the results? Again, protect your psyche. Protect your consciousness. Protect yourselves. Universal love all over the stars and moon and mountains. Evolution of the consciousness. Love is spoken here. I'm Michelle Carithers. Thank you so much for listening to the Evolution of the Consciousness podcast. Please make sure to leave us a review. If you wish to ask a question to Michelle, you can leave her an email at missmichellecarithers at gmail.com.